So have you ever heard of Mr. Beast? What about yeah. PewDiePie? Yeah. How about Keemstar, Logan Paul, Jake Paul? <laughs> he said Keemstar. Holy fuck, Piers Morgan knows who Keemstar is? No fucking way. Oh my god. We may, yeah. Let's get the right into might well the be news. Known. You haven't heard of them. But if you've got kids, you will definitely have heard of them. And they most certainly have. There is a right? tiny handful of the legions of digital personalities whose videos are viewed by literally billions of young people across the world. It's a lot of people. Their endorsements are worth millions in sales. Their opinions can instantly reshape conversations in schools, universities, and across social media. They're more influenced uh -huh. than most musicians, soap stars, sports stars, columnists, lawmakers. But unlike those power brokers of the past, the politicians and cultural stars who can set the social agenda, these people seem to exist in a parallel universe. Their views go largely unchallenged, shared only as bite-sized clips. Their digital businesses often operate beyond the scrutiny of normal journalists and even regulators. They wield massive influence over young people, and they're restricted only by the ever-changing whims of big tech companies. It makes no more sense than senators or secretaries of state simply never appearing on television. Well, my guest tonight is a perfect case okay. in point, an example of both enormous digital conquest and the risks that come with it. He's Andrew Tate. His last interview with me has so far been viewed well, over 8 million times on YouTube alone. And so we're doing another one. So it's like, all right, you know, the last one went pretty well, got a lot of views. So guess what? Yep, we're back at it again. 17 million times across all platforms, which is staggering for someone who perhaps you're watching and thinking, who is Andrew Tate? It was a robust exchange. And Andrew Tate was here because he'd effectively been kicked off the mainstream internet for supposed misogyny. His tirades against women were viewed literally billions of times. So well, the first time around, I wanted to find out if he deserved to be banned and if he'd ever actually crossed a line from shocking opinions to genuine hate speech, or if he just didn't fit the ideal model of the platforms that censored him. Let's go through some. Sure. Right? Do you think women are the property of men? No. And we the point like Why have you said they are? Because I made a religious point. Authority implies that you have the ability to control someone. No, things. authority believes, uh, the authority implies that I have the moral right to sit and say that that's an irresponsible thing to do and I'm responsible for that. That's not what things. authority means. I don't want to interrupt you. I just want to point out that's not what authority uh, means. This is like if from the gives, last one. Can, yeah, this is from the last one. Voluntary authority. authority is not authority. Uh, no, but that's the point. If it's a not. Woman, Pierce. Andrew, it, stop. And this is the thing that's interesting, Pierce. Please let me finish. Yeah, you, again, you're Please. like a politician. No, it says the full interview number two. So, but hang on. It's you just can highlights. say I'm interrupting. You do. But, but you're answering a different question to the one I asked you. Fine. No, no. We'll the, just skip ahead. Why do you know? Because I don't believe in it. It's a lively stuff. I also wasn't sure if I should be interviewing him at all, if he was so unpleasant. Oh, but... shut up. Shut up. Like, what do you... Come on, man. The last video got really popular. Everybody was talking about it. And you're like, bro, come on, let's go. Let's do another one. This shit is, bro, we are farming. Let's go again. Yeah, like, I mean, does anybody really believe this shit? Like, yeah, of course, that's what you're going to do. It's not a bad thing. It's fine. As so many people said, well, why extend his profile and give him a platform? But the fact is that that ship had already sailed. Every teenager in the country knows Andrew Tate. Yeah. It's just a lot of the parents who don't. And since that interview, Andrew has been returned to Twitter. Its new owner, Elon Musk, is determined to perfect, protect free speech online. Many young people, that especially boys, happen. have literally stopped me in the street since that first interview to ask me about Andrew Tate. I've been staggered, honestly, by the response that I've had. So what basically, he has a bunch of kids come up to him and ask him, like, when he's going to interview Andrew Tate again. And finally, it happened enough, and he's doing it again. Okay. What does it say about society that people like Andrew Tate can reach so many more people than conventional stars or journalists even? Who gets to decide where the line is and whether people like Andrew Tate cross it? Are they part of a poorly understood movement? Nobody gets to decide who the line, where the line is. I think that's the greatest thing about the internet. Is you, you, there is no... The thing is about like media and being popular and being in like pop culture is that like back in the day, it was very much like if you didn't say the right things, walk the walk, talk the talk to the right things, you just weren't popular. But like on the internet, if people don't like you on one website, you just go somewhere else. And that's it. It's actually a great thing. 
that panders to teenage rebellion like punk rock or pornography? Mm -hmm. Or are we exposing young people to new and damaging experiences we often don't see and don't understand? It's a whole new world. There are more questions about it than answers, and we're not going to answer them by pretending it doesn't exist. Well, Andrew Tate joins me again now. Andrew, good to see you. Salam alaikum, Pierce. Good to see you. Oh, that's I, right. I've yeah. genuinely been amazed by the reaction I've had in the streets. Not just here, but I went to Qatar for the World Cup, had the same thing there. A lot of people coming up about Cristiano Ronaldo, obviously, but also a lot of people coming up about you. And they were almost exclusively men, young men, who genuinely see you as a role model, as somebody who inspires them, as somebody they want to be like. Yeah. So it made me think, I, the first interview you had was quite combative, the second time uh, a shorter interview, okay. less so. I want to try and work out in this one who you are, because it struck me as extraordinary that Google this week revealed some stats for the year. The number one person whose name followed people Google searching who is in 2022 was Andrew Tate. Jesus Christ. Holy fuck. Wow. Who search and tape, bro? Like, that's insane. What the fuck? Yeah, that's quite remarkable. I think there's a whole swath of the population, especially young men that feel disenfranchised. They feel well, I think it's true that he's right. I mean, Andrew Tate is just, uh, like, guys have been looking for somebody like Andrew Tate for a long time. And, like, there have been, like, kind of st stand-in people like uh, Dan Butzerian of these, like, you know, masculinity uh, icons. But it turns out that all his money was from fucking his, like, his dad's money who went to jail. And so, that, I mean, who cares a fuck about that guy? That guy's a joke. Whereas, like, eff effectively, like, people haven't been able to just completely discredit Andrew Tate yet. That's why. Yeah, Liver King, that's another one. Look at how popular Liver King is. Yeah, like, internet masculinity icons are incredibly popular. It's because a lot of guys, uh, you know, they didn't grow up with, like, an older brother or, like, a dad that sets them straight. And so it's kind of sad, but they go on the internet and they find people like Andrew Tate, and it's like, hey... This is what I've been missing. Yeah, look at Ziz, right? Ty Lopez. Yeah, think about how many of these people there are. Disenfranchised with the media machine and the things they're supposed to believe. They don't feel exactly. an affinity with the educational systems or the culture. And they look at a person like me who stands up and says the things that many young men think. I haven't put a magic spell on the world. The fact yeah, that no, I think he's right. That, that like Andrew Tate isn't changing people's opinions. He's just making them feel more comfortable to say what their opinions really are. People like what I say means that they agree with me deep inside. They may be afraid to say it themselves, but I am seen as a bastion of free speech and a bastion, bastion for masculinity as a whole because a lot of men are largely forgotten about. Do you think you're a force for good or are you a force in evolution where perhaps you've done and said stuff you shouldn't have done and as you get older, perhaps as you get bigger, more followed around the world, you sense a responsibility perhaps you didn't have early on? Well, we all evolve. Every human evolves day by day. You wouldn't be human if you didn't evolve on an hour by hour basis. But I do not think I'm a force for good. I absolutely not really know I'm a force for good because I'm a force for truth. And truth is a good thing. Without truth, we're gonna end up in absolute tyranny and slavery and we're already on our way there. I feel like we're starting to combat it. My cancellation was the beginning of a change. I think that that's kind of true with the, uh, I, I, I do think that not being able to have truth is probably the first step of being under control of some sort of governing force. To the extent that you can't discuss ideas in an honest way, yeah, I, I, I would say so. It's important, yeah, it's a fair point. In public consciousness, Elon having Twitter is another beginning of the change in public consciousness. And anybody who stands up and speaks what they truly believe, even if it's something I don't personally agree with, I think that truth is absolutely important. And people's personal truths and people's personal opinions, even on differing sides of the same opinion, should be heard. I agree with that. I think that there's a line, you know, like if, if people are inciting violence, I think, yeah, sure, that's the line for me. But other than that, yeah, people should be able to say what they want for sure. Personal truth. Well, what he's saying is like people's perspectives on things. Like there are a lot of things like abortion, for example, 
There is no objectively right answer for abortion. You, you know what I mean? Like, you can't just go and, like, it's all like gravity. Where, like, you can figure out and calculate gravity down to, like, the fucking most minute detail. There is? Yeah, keep thinking that. Tell me about your life. You were born to a, a mixed race uh, couple. Your yeah. father was an African American, a chess player. Yeah. Uh, and your mother, she was from this country. Correct. Yeah. So my father was was black chess player. He was in the Air Force. He met my mother here in England, and then I was raised initially in the United States, and then I moved to, to Luton, England, when I was younger. So I've moved around a lot. Okay. I've lived a uh, eclectic life in many different scenarios. We've moved around. I've done a lot of different things, lived a lot of different experiences. And uh, what I'm thankful for What nationality are you? I mean, what do you identify as? I consider myself British now, but I will say that part of me, the patriotic Brit inside of me, is devastated by the state of the UK currently, and I want to make that very clear. The patriotic Brit in me truly loves this country, and seeing what's happening to it, especially to our major cities, is almost heartbreaking to watch in real time. I'm going to be real. Like, I have no idea what's happening over in Britain. I don't live there. So this is just, this is them. Yeah, I mean, I got no fucking idea. It's falling apart. This is a failed society. By every metric you can possibly measure, Jesus. it is absolutely not really failing. The cost of living crisis, the crime rates, everything is falling apart. If you compare it to a country. Is this shit, like, really true? Like, I, because, I, I, I mean, really, like, is, is it true what he's saying? Or is it just, like, something I could look up and it's immediately bullshit? It is true. Wow. Damn, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> what what, what are y'all doing over there? Chill out. Like the United Arab Emirates, you compare it to a city like Dubai. London, which should be the greatest city on earth, is failing in absolutely every metric because our leadership is a joke. If you look at Dubai and the UAE, the leadership there is so flawless, so genuinely genius. They saw ahead and built almost a utopia. And then you look at London, you can't even walk around with a watch on. It's disgusting. You know, it's very interesting. I was in Qatar for the World Cup. Obviously, a lot of people in England taking a very censorious moral view about the World Cup being in the Middle East at all because yeah. of their yeah. laws against homosexuality, because of their treatment of migrant workers. I've got to say... I think you have to acknowledge that. Like, to say that the leadership over there is flawless whenever they have... You know, just like people's make people making life choices that like, you know, this could this could end your life. I, I, that's that's not flawless. Like fucking like there's no way that's flawless. Like, yeah, there are, it's, it's like there's always going to be like good and bad things about everything. So like, yeah, they might not have the same problems that London does, but they have other problems that, that are different. I don't share the concerns about those things. Of course I do. But I found a lot of the virtue signaling, and I think that's what it was in many cases, yeah. about the whole region actually quite distasteful. Because when I was in Qatar, A, I thought the World Cup was fantastically well run, incredibly good experience. But a lot of Qataris were saying to me, you know, it, there's this weird quaint feeling back in your country that we all want to aspire to behave like that, that we all want to ha live in a country with massive drug problems, with massive knife crime issues, with scenes like the European Championships final where it's complete lawlessness going on, um, where stuff like the NHS, the system of healthcare, is basically collapsing, yeah. where the education system is dropping behind, yeah. so on and so on and so on. And it's a really interesting perspective. They were like, I know you all think that we want to have your form of democracy and your form of life, but actually, we're fine, thanks. Absolutely, because it's a failed... Yeah, I think that's true. And, and, like, there is, like, a certain amount of, like, fucking sanctimoniousness that, like, Westerners have that it's like everybody else in the whole world should be like them. Everybody has to have our values. They have to think the way that we think. They have to act the way that we act. You know, there needs to be democracy everywhere. Like, obviously... I think that you can easily say that some of the crazy shit where, like, people get killed for, like, just expressing themselves in a different way. Like, obviously, this is bad. Like, I mean, what are we really going to talk about besides that? That's obviously bad. But the fact is that, like, no, I bet a lot of the people that live in I I Iraq and shit, they like living there. And that's the way that they like doing things a a in a lot of these places that, yeah, if you go to Qatar... A lot of people like living there. I've met people from Qatar. I've met people from Saudi Arabia. They're happy there. 
Absolutely. And it's not our right to go and change that. The same as it's not their right to go over and change what we do. He's right. Society, and it's godless. I think it's disgusting. It's like, it's a whole, uh, what, what's that fucking, that term that people would use back in the fucking, uh, Salem witch trial days? Like, the house on the hill? Where, like, everybody wants to be like us? Bitch, no, they don't. Not everybody does. Other people want to live their life a different way. We leave our old people to rot in old people's homes? And then we sit there and say we don't have enough money mm -hmm. for nurses. I understand this nurse strike very well and how frustrating it can be if you walk into a hospital and the nurse and, is and not. Yeah, somebody brings up a good point in chat that I think should absolutely be taken into consideration. And I think this is a good point of criticism of what I'm saying and what they're saying too. Is that like you have two guys talking about how it's no problem living in Dubai. I bet. I bet. Right? But like, you know, bring on like five women or like ten women. Ask them what their opinion is. And it could be different. I'm not saying it is. I'm not going to tell you what their opinion is. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Prepared to work. But the nurses would be prepared to work at the current wage if they believed this country was spending its money prudently. When you see this country spending its money and just absolutely wasting it, pulling out of thin air to fund proxy wars, God knows where that has nothing to do with them. Of course, as a yeah. nurse, you're going to stand up and say, well, can't I get a pay rise? This country has failed in every metric. And especially our major cities. I, I've just come to London now. I made it very clear to my private jet pilot. I said, fuel the jet and leave it running. Because the second I'm finished talking to peers, I'm leaving this cesspit. It's disgusting. <laughs> this country and London as a whole 10 years ago was one of the most hospitable cities on earth. Now you cannot walk around safely with a watch on. And you're a full-grown man. You're a full-grown adult. When's the last time there's been a serious problem in your life that you completely ignored and it fixed itself? Never. Andrew, that's not true. There have been a lot of problems that I have ignored, and they've gone away. Don't let people fool you. If you ignore your problems, a lot of them actually will go away. Yeah, like the rat. Yeah, there was a rat. It was in the house, and then I ignored it. Eventually, the rat's gone. We're fine. Just like your teeth? Yep, there it is. I ignored the problem, now my teeth are gone. Forever. What are any of our politicians doing to fix any of the problems we're well, dealing with? Well, I saw facing? today that Sadiq Khan is planning to run again for the third term of office as mayor. Oh, All I can say is, I just, everyone I know who's had any experience of crime at any level in London in the last few years has had a bad experience of it of the way it's been handled. You know, I really wish that I could actually talk to real people that live in London and like Britain and shit like that and actually hear what they have to say because like, I don't really know if I should believe this or not you know like you can bro they're in chat yeah but like somebody says discord me bro you're probably in Kansas like you probably never been you went to London in like 2000 and like uh, 2009 I mean I can give an example I can reveal this now Okay. I've talked for 18 months. I got a specific death threat on one of my son's Instagram pages in public, a, a, a public comment. And it was very specific about what this person was going to do. Yeah. I couldn't use the police to evade him. We, we know where you live. We're going to come and kill you. And then a second one threatening uh, my son and his mo mother, my ex-wife. I called in the police. I thought, I'm not having them putting death threats on my son's for sure. Yeah. I called the police. Police investigated this. They arrested somebody over a year ago. And then I heard from the police this week that despite 18 months of investigation of a publicly posted comment on... Bro, it imagine how easy it must be. You, you spend 18 months on one comment and then at the end of it, you don't have to do anything. Bro, that is chill. God damn, man. Like, that's... Yeah, like, they're just relaxed, chilling. Everything is okay. Instagram threatening to kill me uh, on my son's Instagram that they uh, will not be able to pursue the case. Now, and I thought, imagine, I'm high profile. This was a front page of the Sun newspaper. This if story. that same man called a transgender person the wrong pronouns, he would be in trouble. Right. So doesn't it just show absolute, how absolutely asinine and banal our legal system has become? That would never happen. It's hard to say. I think that usually, I mean, the thing is, I, I see what he's trying to say. But 
I don't think that the cops give a fuck about transgender people. I think it's, it's politicians do because they use it as an issue that they can get votes for. The cops don't give a shit who it is. It could be a man, a woman, anything in between. They don't give a fuck. This has happened to people all the time. Like, how many of you guys have had to deal with the cops and they didn't help you? And it's not always their fault. I mean, the thing is, like, they, they do get understaffed. There is other shit that's happening. Absolutely. Like, it's not always the cops' fault. But damn, sometimes it probably is. Happen in a country like United Arab Emirates, the place I'm now residing in Dubai, where the leadership has common sense. And I'm saying that all the leadership structures, doesn't matter if it's labor or conservative, across all of it in this nation have completely and utterly failed. Sadiq Khan is a loser. Because when you have a city which is losing... <laughs> Which, which London is, is losing in all, very, in all metrics across its competitive cities around the world, and you're in charge of it, by extension, you're a loser. I will tell you right now, instead of virtue signaling and giving Qatar a hard time over their religious beliefs, what we should be doing is a treaty with Qatar to build a prison deep in the desert. Give me... <laughs> like escape from New York. I love it. Holy fuck. Yeah, there we go. Like, I, like uh, Alcatraz. You put it out in a fucking island that they can't get away. Yeah. We'll put them in a hole, cover the hole. Yeah. It's just that simple. No, I, th I think that there is some truth to that, right? And I bet like every dude from the Middle East is probably fucking tired of having some guy that is in some Western country that has 15 different fucking problems, a national debt in the billions or trillions going and telling them what they're doing wrong. It's, oh, oh, now we're the problem. I guarantee fucking to you they're tired of hearing that shit. Make me mayor of London. We'll make a prison deep in the desert, and if you're caught with a knife or robbing someone, you can go do 25 years with one meal a day in the, in the scorching sun. <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll put cameras there, and we'll interview you once a week and broadcast that out to the nation and see if you change your mind and make people understand that this is a country that should be respected and our laws should be respected. Instead, what? That, that would probably fucking work. Yep. Judge Dredd, there you fucking go. What happens? What has Sadiq or any of the people in charge of this country actually done to Holy fix any shit. of our issues besides sit around and talk? Nothing. None of them have done anything, but they seem ultra concerned. I mean, isn't this what, what like that one dude in uh fucking the Philistines? Uh, oh, uh, fuck. What's his name? Duarte? Isn't this what he did too? Yeah, I mean, it's... In the Philippines? I said the Philippines. Philistine? No, I said Philippines, didn't I? Oh, maybe I said it wrong. Yeah. ...for proxy wars, ultra concerned with rainbow flags in another country that is uninterested in them, and their priorities are completely messed up. Mm -hmm. Of course the ambulance people are. Of course the ambulance drivers are striking. Of course the nurses are striking. Nobody cares about the most important things in this nation. It's a failing country in real time, and that's why I've left. What about the specific... I, I think that can be applied to the U.S. too. Uh, I mean, I heard like the Senate or some some fucking group of clowns uh, approve some like one point seven trillion dollar spending bill or some shit like this, and it's like how much of that is going to go towards teachers? I mean, I don't know. Probably not a lot of it. Like, why is it the teachers have like one of the lowest paid professions? It's like how is it that like you have like I mean, l l let's say here's the logic, right? It's like how many of y'all ever bought a carry in WoW? How many of you guys ever played like WoW, uh, Lost Ark? One of these games, and he bought a carry in the game. You have, you have, you have, right, 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 right. Okay, so you know, like, let's say you're trying to buy a bus for Vaulton. You're trying to buy a carry uh, for, uh, like, an ultimate in Final Fantasy. You're trying to buy a carry through Ahead of the Curve in WoW. And you go, and you say you're going to pay the absolute minimum. Like, I'm going to pay 100 k for this, nothing more. I'm only going to pay 20 k for this, nothing more. You're going to get a sketchy-ass clown, and the odds are you might not even get your achievement. But if you go and you say, I'm going to put up 250 k a quarter mil, I need my carry, you're going to have these people messaging you, like giving you a flask for the pull, and then you die in five seconds. They're going to wait for you. They're going to summon you to the boss. They're going to do everything that they can to make you happy because they want you to give them more money. Because you get what you pay for. And how is it that where we live in the U.S., 
teachers don't make any fucking money, and everybody's surprised that the kids are fucking stupid. Well, no shit. Anybody who's smart wouldn't be a teacher. Like, we had this happen with the computer class. Neither do cops. A lot of cops don't make a lot of money. Some do make a lot of money. It's a very distorted view. But I think we can all agree on teachers. Um, fact is, that, like, I had a, you know, I was in computer maintenance, like computer repair class. And guess what? Anybody who knew enough about, like, fucking networking and, and, like, computer repair and, like, IT on the level to teach a bunch of people. And, like, honestly, we did that shit all the time anyway. So, like, they would be teaching us about, like, networking things, like, uh, you know, protocols, like, how to do all these other kind of, cra kind of crazy shit, right? Like, our book was this fucking thick. The dude that, that did this, he could go to the private sector and get a job that paid him six figures in a week. So why the fuck is he going to go and teach at some school where if he says, I remember he went and he, t he told us, he said, if I say a swear word one time, like I can get in, I, I can get fired for that. And he would swear every day. Nobody ever fucking reported him. But the fact is that like, yeah, it's, why would you do that? Like, why would you, why would you take a pay cut to get treated like shit by a bunch of stupid fucking kids and not make any money? We had a new teacher every year. It sucks. So, yeah, I, I, I feel the same way about the U.S. When you lack actual competition. Yeah, it, that's the thing is there's no there's no competition for the jobs because nobody wants them in the first place. It's disturbing. Specific allegation, by the way. I don't disagree with a lot of that um, because I do think this country is in big trouble. And, and I do want to make a mention is that, you know, the teacher that we did have, that guy that year, bro, he went in. Like, he helped us a lot. We learned a ton of shit. Uh, we learned, like, uh, fucking uh, internet relay protocols. We learned, like, some fucking, like, Old Testament computer shit. So, like, he was passionate about it. It's not like he didn't give a fuck. Like, yeah, we played Counter-Strike half the time, but we learned about half the other time, right? We learned a lot of shit. And, uh, you know, we could go fix any any fucking shit in a computer. Like, a anything that would be a problem, we go fix it. And uh, you do have passionate teachers. I, I had passionate teachers. How many of you guys had passionate teachers? Well, probably every single one of you had one or two. How many of you had teachers that were not passionate? That's the question. Yeah, it's like my physics teacher. Oh, my uh, my English teacher. Yeah, but here's the thing: is you have seven, you have seven classes a day, and you say my English teacher. So what does that mean about the other six? You see what I'm getting at? And I do think that one of the problems is people think if they do have a crime against them, nobody cares anymore. I right? know, I know, nobody cares. I can, I have specific examples and people who I know personally. Absolutely and utterly nobody cares. I was in Harrods yesterday and someone tried to rob someone's watch in the middle of the store. I walk around with six full grown, I have a security team of six full grown men, plus me and my brother, eight military age males all over 110 kilos, mm. big men, just so I can walk around this city. It's absolutely unacceptable. A lot of people have that that are famous too because people always try to start fights with them. Like, you see this, like, Floyd Mayweather goes anywhere, he's got six guys with him. Shaq goes anywhere, he's got a bunch of guys with him, too. Uh, it's just a matter of liability. No, it's not an exaggeration. Like, this is actually what a lot of people do. Yeah, you have to. It's the same as, like, a lot of people who, um, uh, like, who make a lot of money. They, they, don't, they don't drive. They have somebody drive them for liability purposes. What about the issue of race? And I mentioned that in the context of the Harry and Meghan ongoing debate, their war with the royal family, war against the monarchy, their specific uh, constant uh, referencing to the fact that they believe they were driven out of here because of racism in Britain. What do you make of that debate? That, that's absolute fallacy. I and you're from a mixed race... Correct. Background yourself. Correct. I'm from a mixed race background myself. And while we're discussing the leaders of the UK, although I do think they're doing a terrible job, it's kind of hard for Meghan to say that the UK is a racist country when the leader of the UK is darker skinned than her and the mayor of London is darker skinned than her. And I am a person who's probably darker skinned than her. And I've never experienced any kind of bigotry against myself besides the fact I'm a straight male. I'll get bigotry for that before I'll get bigotry for my skin color. I think it's just a cop out in her not wanting to be perspicacious and self-reflective enough to understand that she has attacked an age-old institution, and there are people who are very patriotic about that institution, and by attacking it and bringing a degree of distaste to it, there's gonna be people who don't like her, 
And if you're a dislikable person, you can't just instantly stand up and say it's because of my skin color. It might because, be because of your actions and some of the things you've said. I mean, I think it's probably no doubt she's had racism on social media because... Yeah, it- I think that's probably true. Like, I mean, I don't really know about this shit because it's like, what the fuck do I care about the, the, the British royal family? Like, I, like, we fought a war, like, 300 years ago to not have to give a fuck about that. So, like, the last thing I'm going to give a fuck about is Megan, Ma- Megan motherfucking Markle. Like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Who it's hasn't, a, it's, a, it's a cesspit. You probably have. Well, as I said to say, I've had death threats on social media, and no, no, one, no one seemed to care very much. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's probably inarguable. My issue with what they've both been doing is if you're going to make allegations against an institution like the royal family and the monarchy, you've got to actually provide some evidence. You can't just spray gun this thing out there and say, well, somebody was racist. Yeah, and airing dirty laundry is never going to be respected by the populace, and being a tattletale is never going to be respected by the populace. And I think the problem with the modern world we're living in is a lot of age-old traditions are being destroyed in real time. It doesn't matter what the tradition is. Most of them are being eroded. And something like the British royal family... Which is I don't a- think that's always a bad thing. I, I think that there are a lot of old traditions that aren't good. You, you shouldn't just do something because we always did it. It's like at a certain point, like maybe we should stop doing it. Around for a very long time is an age old tradition. One of the things holding the UK together, one of mm. the last things we have to sit and detriment it and to sit and insult it and to give away secrets from inside of it and try and paint a, a negative image of it is going to upset a lot of people and you have to be prepared for that backlash you can't say i've done well, it makes that what he's saying makes sense like it, it does because like a lot of people bro like they love the royal family oh my god and even over here there is no one who loves the royal family more than soccer moms oh my god they are just like anytime i go and i see these uh these fucking things like you know you're checking out at the grocery store and it's like what that kate i forgot middleton i think her name is and and megan markle and and then like the bald guy and the ginger guy i i forgot the prince i think harry and uh, prince paul were fucking some shit i have no idea and they just get so into this and i see them care about it paul like yeah i mean harry but i, I don't know things that upset people but it's nothing to do with what i've done it's purely because of my skin color also but yeah all i'm saying is like people do look at like in the same way that we have like uncle sam and uh you know like let me think like george washington well well they had like the queen Right, but like the queen is real. Well, like I mean, oh, George Washington was real, but like Uncle Sam's not really real. So she's kind of like a mascot. It's like it's like Chucky at Chuck E. Cheese. So like if you go and you don't like Chucky at Chuck E. Cheese, it, yeah, you can say you like the pizza and, and the games, but like it's still kind of weird. So it's kind of ironic that she's doing that because she's not particularly dark skinned. It's kind of funny to sit here, sit here, sit here, I mean, no, watch I, her sit and say, yeah, race, I, race, I, race. I think the truth is, I don't know what, look, you can say that, I can't. Um, the, the reality of it is, I just don't know what the specifics of the racism she says she's had because we've not seen any evidence. The universe is a funny place, Piers. If you're looking for something, you're going to find it, right? When I got canceled, when they attacked me unfairly, lied about me across the entire mainstream media, deleted me from social media so I couldn't defend myself and lied about me repeatedly, I could have stood up and said, it's because I'm brown. I didn't do that. I sat and said, okay, there's people who misunderstand my message. My message is a a positive one. People misunderstand me. Let me self-reflect and understand that, yes, perhaps this said a long time ago was said in the wrong way. Perhaps this was misunderstood. Perhaps people don't understand this. I could have just copped out and could have just been refusing to self-reflect on any level and said, it's because I'm brown, that's why they did it. But that's not the mature way to be as an adult. What did you think of the Jeremy Clarkson furore where he... Yeah, it's like... I'm glad at least Andrew Tate says, like, yeah, some of this stuff I said is, like, you know, you know, right? Like, yeah. I'm glad at least he says that. Because, yeah, I mean, I've watched some of the stuff he said. And some of it was, like, this was totally out of pocket. But I'm glad he's, like, I I haven't heard him fucking say any stupid, crazy shit like that recently, at least. In, like, the last, like, I don't know, three months, four months. Right. Well, I think most people, but including him, uh, belatedly after he'd published it and written the column, 
he did make a, an analogy from a Game of Thrones uh, scene, okay. which most people, I think, did find crossed a line and was What's deeply this? offensive. I, I think it crossed a line. What do you think? Yeah, I understand why people feel that. But when you attack an institution as old as the British royal family, you're attacking patriotism in and of itself for one of the most respected countries or previously most respected countries on earth, and you're going to have some visceral reactions. Perhaps Jeremy Clarkson... Yeah, is uh, of course. I, I mean, like, duh. I, fuck the royal family. Yeah, but, like, a lot of the people that say fuck the royal family don't live there. There are a lot of people, and this is probably how they view it. I think that they view the royal family in the same way that people in Qatar view their old traditions. This is what we've done. This is what my parents did. This is what their parents did. We have always done this. And now here you are, and you're trying to change everything that we're doing because of what? So, yeah, I, I think that's it makes sense that people want to defend the royal family because it's a representation of what they believe it means to be British. Like, absolutely. Give me, give me one second. Oh, fuck. is too famous and too well-renowned to say those kind of things, but there's a lot of people who genuinely feel that way, and that's why he said it. And this is what happens when you attack age-old institutions in any country. Should he have yeah. apologized? That's a good question. It looks like he did. Personally, I think as a man, you should stand up, say what you mean, mean what you say. I don't think you should ever apologize for anything you've ever said. Even me. I disagree with that. I think you should apologize if you said something that you regret to say. Like, it, it, I don't think that it's be, being a man is not doubling down on a mistake. I would argue being a man is being able to accept that you made a mistake or you shouldn't have said something and you can move on. Because, like, in a way, it's like you, you talk about, like, the world is built on truth and then you're living a lie because of some, some like, idea you have in your head. I, I think that's silly. Like, I, I, you know me, like, I never apologize for shit. I forgot the last time I apologized for something. So, like, he, he like, I, I basically believe the same thing, but I think that it's like you should never apologize unless you're sorry. If you're not actually sorry, don't, don't apologize. What if, you, what if you say something truly then if, 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 very well, offensive and you actually do regret it? If you truly regret it, then yeah, okay, you can apologize. Yeah, but okay. if at the time you meant it, then the best thing you can do is say, look, I have just changed my mind. I no longer feel that way. But at the time, that's how I felt. And I'm the person who stands, says what he feels. And that's what I felt at the time. And I apologize that offended you. That's fine. That's totally fine. Andrew Tate, we'll be back with you after the break. We'll talk to you about Twitter again. Yeah, uh, Elon fine. Musk retor restoring you to this platform. Has it calmed you down? Are you as controversial on there? Are you mindful that you're only one false move like Kanye West, for example, away from being removed again? Well, Elon Musk has restored a... Somebody says, uh, what have Tate done for society in all these years? I think that really uh, people like Andrew Tate, it's the same as like any religious person or like anybody who preaches any sort of fucking like ideology. What they do is they're just going out to... Like, it's like self-improvement or, like, self-actualization or realization. That's really what they do. From a band of cars is taking over Twitter with a small commitment to free speech. It's also shown he has a lot... Does question marks on that? No, no, bro. Like, honestly, people watch, people watch somebody like Andrew Tate or uh, Tony Robbins. Let me think, uh, Ty Lopez. And like, yeah, some people get finessed. Some people get scammed. Like definitely that's bad. It's the same as like Pat Buchanan, uh, you know, like some of these, uh, Joel Osteen, all these people, but, but all of them, they have uh, viewers and audiences because they sell a lifestyle or a way of looking at war at the world that that's appealing to people. That's that, that's what it is. Jordan Peterson's another one. Yeah. Fine of his own, though. Conspiracy theorist Alex Jones remains banned. Kanye Ye West was reinstated, then banned again for posting a swastika inside a star of David. Andrew Tate is back, too, for now. Anyway, he was first removed in 2017, for saying women should bear some responsibility as victims of rape. And he hasn't exactly been shy since his reprieve. Let's take a look. 
Genghis Khan had endless women and two hundred children one. as a reward for conquest. He tweeted, "I'm the most searched man on the planet. I've conquered Earth. I'm the highest status male on the planet. Females do not expect loyalty from me. They only expect that of lesser men." Then there was this: Imagine having less than ten children because you're a <clears throat> who doesn't Pussy have bitch. four wives. Genetic failures. Funny. I don't know what happened. Like about like a thousand years ago. Where like some dude decided like you should only ha we should only have one wife. Like who was it that sold us out? Cause like some dude in the at, in in the old days yeah what the fuck? Like we had it made bro like everything was good to go, and then they changed this shit and now you can only have one wife. Who did that? We pussied out so much since Genghis Khan man. <laughs> True. <laughs> The girl follows me and she's hot and I see a single picture of her in a private jet. It's block. Women can't afford jets. Women are all brokies. Why are you flying around on some man's jet? You should have been a virgin when I met you. Haram. All right, Andrew Tate. Uh, are you, you're getting very near the knuckle with some of those tweets. Am I? You tell me. I don't think so. I think people can understand they're semi-satirical. I think people can understand. Do you mean them as jokes or do you mean them? It's not that. I think the answer to that question is yes. I don't mean them as jokes. I mean... They're a overall public commentary and observation. I do mean what I say. If I were to see a girl on a private plane on Instagram, for example, I would assume that a man put her on that private plane. I would not assume she bought it herself. What if it was Perhaps Ari that makes me misogynistic. What if it was Ariana Grande or Beyonce? Well, that's slightly different, isn't it? Why? Because they're famous and very they're rich. They're women? Yeah, of course, and they're famous and very rich. But so if there I, are lots of women you saw, wouldn't think that if well, you actually saw them on if a private I saw, plane. Well, if I saw a 19-year-old girl from Moldova where the average wage is $200 a month and she was on a private jet, I would assume that with the balance of probabilities, considering I'm an adult, it's very likely because of her beauty, a man has put her on that private plane. Yes, if that makes sense. That logically does make sense. I mean, yes, of course. Uh, duh. Could be her dad. Could be your uncle, could be family money. Be misogynistic instead of just perspicacious enough to understand how the world works. He loves so that word. I'm a realist. Should you be such a generalist about these things? Well, you have to be a generalist when you're looking for- I think that being a generalist is a good thing because it weeds out people that fixate on exceptions. There are exceptions for everything in life. Everything in life has exceptions. You don't need to write out every exception in every tweet. Like, a, a smart person can read a tweet and know that this does not apply to every single human being that's ever been in this condition, ever. Yeah, any, yeah, actually, anybody who ever does that is a fucking idiot. Not, unless I do it, when, then it's different. But anybody else is a fucking idiot in the balance of probabilities and trying to find balance in the world. You have to be a generalist. In general, if I stroke a lion, it's going to bite my hand. In yeah. general. There might be a nice one, but I don't want to find out. So that's how Smart. the world works. You've praised the Taliban in the past. Would you do so again? <laughs> Why? Tonight? The world is not black and white. The world is gray. It's Which, to be fair, I mean, you got to keep in mind, the White House praised the Taliban back in the day. So just keep that in context. Difficult to sit and make black and white assumptions about anything. To sit and say that the Taliban are completely and utterly evil and we're completely and utterly good, as you just discussed with the moral high ground. I believe that. No, the I, I think I think what he's saying is like partially true. It's like if you see some dude that's in ISIS, right? Some guy that's in ISIS, he's 19 years old. There has never been a moment in his life that his country was not occupied by a foreign power. And guess what? He doesn't fucking like it. He wants to blow everybody up and get them out of his country. Okay? Because I guarantee you, I'm sure many of the soldiers that are over there are probably good people that do the right thing and are not abusive. But I do think ISIS isn't a country. Oh, really? The people that are, the people that are in ISIS live in the country, don't they? Are, are we going to play this little game? Are we going to play this? Oh, like, oh, we, we, we going to do this little run around, huh? Let, let, let's stop it. Yeah, actually, shut up. So, yeah, of course. And bring law and order 
It may not be the law and order we like, but it's a form of law and order, and humans tra usually gravitate towards... What about towards their treatment of women? I mean, only well, tonight... Only tonight they have banned any women from going to university. Fantastic. Let's get the feminists to go and... Any women from going to university. Fantastic. Let's get... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> there we go. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> I love how he's like it, the way he did it. He he actually seems like elated. He's like, "Wow, really?" The feminists to go and teach him a lesson. The feminists are so tough, and they stand up and say they can do anything a man can do. Let's arm him up and send him to Afghanistan. I'm sure they'll fix it. Yeah, but it's it's not a, it's a it's a serious matter, isn't it? That women don't uh, get the a, education and that, they and deserve. That's, and that's a very serious answer. If women are just as capable as men in terms of combat, like feminists pretend they are, then they can go over there and they can deal with the a lot of women. Do I don't think that like I mean if. if Listen, women don't have to register for the draft. Men and women are different physically. If you don't believe that, I mean, okay. You don't have to believe it, but it is true. Go to combat. Exactly. So they can go deal with the Taliban. It's nothing to do with me. They can stand up and fight for their own rights. But surely you wouldn't no. defend the Taliban it's, banning women from university. That's it's stupid. saying it's nothing to do with me, Pierce. It's absolutely nothing what to do with me. What about the Afghan women? I think what he's saying is that like, I, I think what Andrew Tate is saying is, like, I think this is generally true, is that people in Western countries spend a lot of time fucking, uh, like, like being sanctimonious towards people in, like, second, second world countries, like, developing countries, like, trying to tell them, like, oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, uh, etc. And I think that is... It, it, it's like, if you live in that country, like, that's the last thing you want to hear from these people. Yeah, it, it, obviously everybody everybody has the right to their own opinion, but so do them whenever you give them your opinion. It's nothing to do with- You sit on the fucking fence. Wait, what do you mean you sit on the fence? Baby Rage HS, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? Yeah, what what fence what fence am I on? I'm curious, like what what uh what perspective do you think that I have that's a that's a fence that's a fence position? What where, where where's it at? Where it be at? Where where that where that where's that fence position at? Come on, let's hear it. Uh oh. Uh oh, you better be typing up something good. I swear to God, you got like three words. I'm gonna ban you. Come on, let's go. Let's see it. Let's see, where you at? You about to get your logs pulled. You starting to shit. Starting to shit on my stream? Go ahead. Go ahead, type it up. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get your logs up right now. We're gonna get we're gonna get them up right now. Let's see it. People mad at this. Like you, like you see it's a it's a smart it's a person that thinks they're smart. Let's see what it is. What's he gonna say? Come on. Never talk to peers. Don't even listen to this full asthma, please don't. Piers is a shill. Oh, this is a this is a new viewer. All right, this is your first day in in chat. I hope you're enjoying. Well, where where is it? What's up? Where's your messages? What what do you have to say? You're not gonna tell me that you just came in here to talk that shit and leave, are you? There's no way you're about to leave and fucking say this. Oh my god! Like you really like. Bro, like, did you pussy out on just typing a message in a chat? I, I don't need to be smart. You were just proving my point. I'm glad you, I'm, that's true. You don't need to be smart. That is true. <laughs> uh, I gotta agree with you, man. God, what an idiot. 
with me on any level. You don't have a view? I have a view. My view is that people naturally gravitate towards law and order, and if you didn't have the Taliban, you'd have different warlords operating in lawlessness, and there would be no way to prevent your store, your market stall, getting completely robbed by someone with an AK-47, and people are going to gravitate towards a form of law and order. America left. They left the power vacuum, and the power vacuum is now full. Well, I don't disagree with that. Okay. Well, but I do goes. think I do think the banning of women from university in Afghanistan is utterly horrific. And I think the feminists are going to arm themselves. They're going to show us that they can do anything a man can do. They're going to go over there to combat. And they're going to teach Taliban. Well, it's I mean, like here's the thing, right? Is like obviously it's bad that they do that over there. Like it's stupid, but like I don't want to spend a billion dollars and go send troops over there to die for it. Like I I don't want to send a bunch of people to go over there and get killed. For, for their bullshit? No way. That's not my problem. I don't live there. Why can't you just say on that, you know, only a billion. Completely wrong. Yeah. Because it's not my point. It's, I don't understand. But it, makes you, it makes me think. It'll make your critics think that you don't think it's wrong. They could ban all men. They could ban all short people. But they're people. not. They're only banning women. Correct. They could ban all short people. They could ban all people with long hair. And it, None of it's anything to do with me. So they can do whatever they want. I'm not going to go to war with the Taliban. But you've just literally spent an impassioned... I think that, like, really... The, and this is, this is the thing, right? Is that... Like, peer, like, Andrew Tate doesn't have anything to do with, like, Canada, for example. So, like, is he going to go and give hot takes on what Canada can and can't do? Because, in my opinion, I think that it is kind of... Like, there's a double standard here whenever he's going and saying that nobody should be criticizing them like who cares i don't want to have an opinion on it but then he simultaneously has an opinion on another country that has nothing to do with him so it's like i i i don't like that logic i think you can easily say that you can have an opinion on something but you're just not willing to sacrifice a lot to execute that opinion the segment comparing the way for example dubai handles law and order Correct. to this country. Correct. So you do express views about different laws. Absolutely. Both places. So when like I put to you a law that basically bans women from being educated, it's not why is it a problem for you to say, you know what, it's wrong. There are both places I've resided in, Dubai and London, so I have personal experience. I can give my personal opinion, but like I said, it has absolutely nothing to do with me with what the Taliban decide to do inside of Afghanistan. And if they decide that's the most prudent way to run their society, then we have two choices. We can either go over there and start another war that we shouldn't be involved in and waste a bunch of life, or we can sit and say, it's up to them. They should govern themselves. They're people. We're no better than them. And they've decided to live their lives a particular way, and that's how they're going to live it. Like I said, I've never agreed on the moral relativism. I think there are things that are just like, if you want to go into the argument that like, for example, like, any place that has slavery is bad. Like, just full stop. Like, I, it's not a question. It's not like a, oh, well, this is... Like, I, you can easily just say that, like, that's bad. And at the same time, you can say, well, I still don't want to spend billions of dollars and get people killed to fix it. Because it's not my right to change it, but it is my right to have an opinion on it. I think it's okay to have an opinion on other th on other things, other places, etc. Especially whenever it's like a, a a big idea like this, and like not having an opinion on it whatsoever is like kind of weird. But uh, again, I I guess I can kind of respect that. What about indentured servitude, like in Kuwait? Well, I think that there's a lot of there's a spectrum for it. I mean, like, I'm not gonna. Well, what about this? What about that? What about X? What about Y? Fuck. There's a million things that are probably bad in the world. Just because I don't mention every single one, whenever I mention one of them, d doesn't mean anything. Slavery is bad. Okay. Yeah, you got it. It's bad. Yeah. There's plenty of shit that's bad. Reddit. What about is a moment? Yeah. God damn. Feminists are very upset and they're very disgusted by the fact that in Afghanistan, women cannot go to school. I've been told repeatedly by feminists that, that they're sucks. just capable as men in all realms. And I expect them to arm themselves and fly over to Afghanistan and fix it. Like a lot of women have done in combat. Uh, good. Congratulations. Go fight. Well, this is the thing that's very interesting. Because when you talk about ideas, it's not even just about Afghanistan and feminism. When you talk about ideas, they must all be defended at some point. There has to come down to violence. The world is backed by violence. Nobody wants to talk about this. It doesn't matter what it is. If you have a disagreement between two parties, eventually if the disagreement continues, it ends up in violence. Feminism. That's true. He, he is right about this. This is, this is absolutely true. 
is you know why you listen to the government? Because they'll kill you if you don't. That's why. This, that's the reason. That's it. defended by men. Men stand up and defend feminism, not feminists themselves, because they're incapable of violence. And we're in a situation now where you're saying that we should send men to go and fight for feminism. Why? It's not a man's problem. No, I think I'm saying feminists believe. I think. Well, I think. I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, like men have daughters and wives and sisters and moms and shit, right? I, I, I don't like this idea. Like, you should only care about what is like exclusive to you. I, I think that's a that's a bit much. Men can be feminist too, because if feminism believes in equality for women, it's not I'll sign up to it. Any, I don't agree with radical feminists who hate men. Right? They're, they're too, nobody to me, does. They're, radical anything to me is a bad thing. Yeah, and I think most feminism in the West currently is radical. Well, some of it is, no yeah. question. Absolutely, but this is my point. My point is that what the Taliban are going to do whatever the Taliban decides. That was a good. That was a good s statement by Andrew Tate. That was smart. He's getting a lot better at these interviews. Yeah, he's getting a lot better. That was very clever for him to say that. And uh, yeah, overall, what I'm saying is like, I, I just, I don't understand like why it's so hard for people to say that, yeah, these things are bad in the world and it's not my place to go fucking to, to, to stop them. I think people like, it, maybe it's because like they're afraid of, they don't want to feel like they are allowing something bad to happen, but they are and everybody is. I think people just like to be coddled, you know, they don't like to ever accept the fact that they're providing a platform or like allowing shit like this to happen. Fear of social consequences? Yeah. Empathy in the shared human condition? Yeah, but like, but like, where's that empathy whenever it's like somebody who is like living under a bridge in your hometown? Like, how, how is it like more empathetic to care about women in Afghanistan than like a guy that's homeless in your country? Like, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be any empathy, but I think that there should be, like, some fucking, uh, some different levels to it. But yeah, go to L.A. and be empathetic. If I'm going to fly over to another country, I will respect their laws and customs. It's not Everybody my should. You go to another country, you break the law, it is what it is. Some of their laws are fucking stupid, but it is what it is job to come along and tell other people how to live i don't believe i have a moral high ground in that degree now nah, you and do that all the time man come on get, get real like that's what all your content is how to live and if people are genuinely upset and disgusted by it the bottom line and most disagreements on the earth is violence people who feel like they should go and fix it then fix it with violence then it can be the feminists who feel so outraged by it but it's funny they don't comment on these subjects feminists they seem to instead attack the western male for some reason you deleted a video in which you praised isis why that's probably a good idea, probably to delete that, Brittany Griner. Yeah, no, that's that's true. I mean, the thing is with her, I think people, like, if I remember what that situation was, is like she was like a WNBA player, and she got detained by Russia for having some fucking weed pen, and then we traded her out for the guy that they made Lord of War based off of. You know, some guy with a mustache. I mean, to be fair, he had a really good mustache, but he's like a murderer and a terrible person. The Merchant of Death. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, and, and so I don't think people were mad that Brittany Griner got brought back. Like, we would all be happy about that. It's the fact that we had to trade him for an international arms dealer that a blockbuster movie was made off of because of how prolific and damaging he was to the world. Like, that's really kind of like that. I mean, that's like chasing. That's like trading a Squirtle for a Charizard. Like, yeah, you made the trade. You got the Squirtle. But what did it cost? I don't know which video you're talking about in particular. It might have been a video from a long time ago. But in general, I understand that, like I said, the world is not black and white. The world is gray areas. And Western imperialism as a whole has been causing more problems than it's ever fixed. And it's disgusting. And I don't know the exact video you're referencing. But sometimes when an underdog destroys a Western imperialist, I have a degree of... I wouldn't say satisfaction, but every satisfaction. Single... No, but there's a, there's certainly a degree of oh, uh, the, the... the way ISIS. <laughs> I like how Andrew Tate's like not satisfaction, and then Pierce Moy is like satisfaction. How dare you? <laughs> oh my god! Whatever he just said, not satisfaction. 
Well, I don't know the particular. Conducted themselves. I don't know about the particular video we're talking. Well, ISIS about. were one of the most deadly terror groups in the world. Absolutely. They committed a series of appalling atrocities. Sure. Killing innocent people left, Completely. right, and centre. Yeah. How could you possibly have satisfaction? Well, I, if it's the video I'm recollecting, if it's the video we're talking about, it's about the fact that I believe that ISIS was funded by the West and created by the West in the first place. And it wasn't a degree of satisfaction, like, I'm happy ISIS. I think that you could say ISIS, any of this shit could be created by the West. Like, even if you don't think that, like, they have effectively armed them. Like, obviously, like, bro, like, uh, occupying a country for 20 years, like, militarily, like, yeah, of course that's going to create some sort of, like, fucking, uh, like, like counter, uh, counter group. Like, uh, no shit. Like, of, of course that, like, bro, like, that's what happened here. We, we had the Revolutionary War. Like, no fucking shit that's what's going to happen. Like, as I said, it's like guys guys that are in ISIS, bro, like, they grew up, they probably never remember a time that the U.S. wasn't in control of shit there. And if they do remember a time, the worst part of it was whenever they grew up. So, yeah, it makes, makes perfect fucking sense why these people would be pissed off. What take, bro? I know people might get mad about that or might get upset, but it's true. If you go and meddle and fuck with other people all the time, and then they go around and they turn around and they say, fuck you, 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 like, they can still be wrong. ISIS sucks. But you can't be surprised. It's exists. the truth. This was a commentary on the world. Well, here's what you said. ISIS are the real Muslims because ISIS do exactly what the book says. Kill everyone who's not a Muslim and chop people's heads off and set them on fire and be raging lunatics. But all the other Muslims go, they're not real Muslims because I read the book and ignore those parts. Well, then you're not... Bro, like, this is the... Fuck, like, every religion has this... Oh, my God. They're not the real Christians. They're not real Muslims. They're not real Jews. Oh, my fucking God. Holy shit, it's, it's the same book. All the books came from pretty much the same place. A lot of the things in the books pretty much line up. How do people keep killing each other over this shit? It is amazing to me. How does this happen? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, <laughs> they've been doing this forever. Effing Muslim because you're ignoring the effing book. That's an interesting, that's an interesting point you've just raised, because I am now Islamic. And it's, it's funny, because I used to be an atheist, and when you're an atheist, you believe that religion causes more problems than it fixes, and then you come to a realization, and you start to learn the truth of yourself and the truth of God, and you realize that religion is actually the cure for most of the problems in the world, and godlessness is the problem in the world. So that is something I will apologize for. I would say... Okay. All right. So he's going to apologize for the, for that. I, I think for a lot of people, uh, God, religion, uh, Islam, Christianity is an ordering force in their life. I, I, I do genuinely believe that. Now I don't, I also think that it can be bad. I, I'm not particularly religious, so I'm not saying that I do this. Okay. Like I, I the, the extent of my religion, like I, I had communion, you know, I grew up raised Roman Catholic, had communion, went to catechism or not catechism, catechism. It's like the fucking school where you learn about religious shit. And I had to do that for a long time. None of the girls there were hot. It was awful. And I had to do that on top of school. So yes, of course. And there are a lot of people that I know that are religious and I don't know about you guys. This is coming from somebody who is extremely critical of religion all the time. But the fact is that a lot of my friends that are religious are in general probably living more fulfilling lives than the ones that aren't. And I say this as somebody who is non-religious. This is my personal experience and personal anecdote that means nothing more than that. Yeah, ignorance is bliss. Uh At what 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 way ignorance is bliss? I I think that's a very patronizing way to look at it. I wouldn't agree with I, I would not agree with that framing. admit I was wrong about because I was atheistic and now as a Muslim I understand that's absolutely not the case if that's the particular video you're talking about then then there's well that's really it. interesting so you you regret saying that yeah because you learn and you grow and you evolve as I said uh, at the time I believed it because I didn't believe in God at the time 
It was a very long time ago. It's actually kind of a testament to you, Piers. You managed to find the oldest possible videos of me that have ever existed. Right. But at the time, I was atheistic. Well, no, I was curious because you have recently converted to Islam. Correct. So these questions, I think, are pertinent to your conversion. Absolutely. As to what you actually believe as a practicing Muslim now. Uh, yeah, I believe that Islam is beautiful. I believe it's the last true religion on earth. It's certainly the last respected religion on earth. And I felt differently inside since I've converted. And I think it has the solutions to a lot of the problems we're facing in the world today. That particular video was once again satirical. I, 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 do, I, I, I do cringe a bit at the idea that religion has solutions for society's problems. I, I think that, you know, religion, it can, it can be really helpful and uplifting for people on a personal level. But not everybody is religious. And I don't want to see a religious law uh, affect everybody else. Like, I, I don't think anybody wants that because it's like, then whose religion do you listen to? Because everybody has that shit. It has solutions. Yeah. Not society. Yeah, I, I think on a personal level, like religion is, I, I totally respect it. It's okay. Like, you can believe what you want to believe. Now, I might not agree with it. I might think you're wrong. Um, and I'm not going to act like you're right just because you have this opinion. You can, you, you, you can have whatever opinion you want, just like anybody else can have whatever opinion they want on whatever opinion you want. But at the end of the day, you can say what you want. A lot of people watching this would not have seen it. They would not have seen the joke element of it. It's fine. It, but It's not funny. Though. Well, it, I mean, like, I don't really think it was a... It's like, I mean, I can see, like, the kind of effect he's trying to go for. But uh, I, I always hate whenever people say, like, some shit's a joke. Like, sometimes, like, yeah, it's true. But, like, a lot of times it's not. Oh, well, you know, it's like most of the time, as we discussed in our first interview with me, things are taken out of context, short form, et cetera, et cetera. But... All in all, you could say the same things about Christians. If you were to read the Old Testament and say, stick to the Old Testament, you'd kill anyone who works on a Sunday. So There you go. And, and other shit like that, too, for sure. Uh, obviously, people say, like, religion's done more harm than good. That's debatable. Stalin was not religious. Neither was Mao. <laughs> Nobody has a monopoly on being a piece of shit. It's not applicable to... You wouldn't countenance violence. Mm. Say again? You don't countenance violence. I absolutely do not countenance violence. When I was talking about violence being the bottom line salute, the bottom line decider between dis disagreeing points of view, it's not I'm s calling for violence. I'm just making a commentary on how the world genuinely functions. But when you use a word like satisfaction, you understand that people will watch that and think, how can you possibly find any form of terrorism satisfying? I don't find any form of terrorism satisfying. I don't find Western terrorism satisfying either. I don't think it's satisfying that we managed to find $500,000 per bomb. He's gotten a lot better at this. As I said, like, Tate, you know, like, Andrew Tate's gotten a lot better at these interviews. Yeah, that was a deflection. Yeah, this is a good one. To drop on some farmer who makes $4 a day under the name of freedom. And, well, then we can't, uh, and, and, and we can't seem to pay our nurses enough to do their jobs. I don't find any kind of terrorism. And it's actually very interesting. You talk about the world terrorism. Terrorist and freedom fighter, good guy and bad guy. All of this is subjective. There are people who believe that the West are the biggest terrorists on the earth. There are people who believe that America true. causes more wars than anyone else. And That's they kill more people than anyone else. And there's people who believe the absolute opposite. So once again, it depends who you're talking to. It's a subjective conversation. There's no black and white. And he's right about that, right? I mean, if, if the, uh, what do you call it? Fucking, uh, if, if like George Washington and all them had lost the Revolutionary War, what do you think they'd be called? In the world. There's areas of gray, and that's how it is. So I thought you were talking about another video where I was saying that ISIS is standing up and fighting for what they believe in. I'm not saying what they believe in is right, but that's what they were fighting for at the time. And it was a completely different video than the one you were actually referencing. But you would condemn them now? I don't condemn anybody doing anything bad to anybody. I, I'm not a person out here with a criminal record. I don't hurt anyone. I just spent my first segment on this show talking about how I believe in law and order. And how important that is, I think people can operate inside of... Yeah, I don't know what that was either. Like, uh, yeah, I was one... I, I don't know what that... ...their lives safely and walk around. Man, woman, child can walk around in safety in any city they live in. How that law and order is constructed is not my jurisdiction. I'm not in charge of the law and order of, of Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, any of them. It's nothing to do with me. No stands. I want to talk to you after the break about masculinity. Why is it that so many young men gravitate to you? Okay, what is your is view be of what it takes to be a man? Welcome back to the special edition of Piers Morgan on Sense. Here we go. Andrew Tate, one-on-one. -on -one. So Ash Sarkar, who's a 
A lively contributor to this program has tweeted, Andrew Tate, who you're interviewing about free speech, thinks women are a man's property, we shouldn't be allowed to drive, boast about only dating teenagers to imprint on them. Misogynists are disgusting, whether they're in Afghanistan or a swanky London studio. Am I a misogynist, am I? I don't think, I, first of the things she said, I don't even truly believe. Uh, it's, I can, if you're prepared to listen to me, I'll explain to you exactly why she's utterly and, completely and utterly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You can go through the points again. Well, do do you think one. you're a misogynist? Absolutely not. I'm not a misogynist on okay, any level. Okay, here we go. Those buzzwords they throw at, they just throw at people randomly. Homophobic, racist, misogynist, they just throw it out at people. What is I'm, your view of women? I'm a realist. What is your real view of women? I absolutely not only really love women. I adore women. I have good relationships with women. Not a single woman has come up to me on the street since I've been canceled. Not a single one has said anything negative. Every single one of them has said positive things. You're a traditional male. I wish more men were like you. You understand your masculine roles. You understand what you're supposed to do. There are a lot of women that like this kind of shit. It's, it's very true. No, he's, I, I can guarantee you this is true. Absolutely. You understand you're supposed to protect women. You're exactly the kind of man I'd be looking for. I've never had a negative interaction with a female ever since I've been dubbed the biggest misogynist Where in the world. Where is the... Please, please let me finish. I'm sorry, sorry, Pierce. Also, there's not been a single woman who's accused me of a crime, not a single woman who's accused me of rape, not a single woman who's come out and said anything from my entire past of 36 years I've done anything wrong ever. Anybody else with my level of fame, any footballer, any other movie star, at least has people who've come out and accused them of rape, X, Y, Z. I have no woman who's come out and ever said I've hurt her. No woman who's come out and ever said I've done damage to her or been horrible to her. Everybody who ever interacted with me has said I've been a nice person. All of them. Here's so this okay. random Twitter nobody who seems to know so much is full of... All right, you, you've responded to her tweet. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's a liar. But here's what I, where is the line for you between masculinity, which I will always defend, and which I agree with? I think a lot of women like men to be masculine, and, and what has become known as toxic masculinity. And the reason I ask you is that you are engaged in that debate with men all the time. Where is the line for you where men shouldn't cross, where the behaviour should be kept within a line. Please define toxic masculinity. Well, you tell me what you think it crosses a line from being a... Ma I think, like, toxic masculinity is, like, guys shouldn't cry or, like, show emotion. I, I think it, it, it's, like, basically the role of men in society that reduces and removes their ability to express themselves in, in a productive way. Yeah, men don't cry or men are... It's okay, like, to, uh, like, let me think of a way to put it. Like, the Gillette commercial. Yeah, and, and then even the opposite. Like, it's okay to stare at girls or to catcall girls, you know, because, like, oh, if you see a hot girl, you have to react to it. Like, I think that's also toxic masculinity. Yeah, that kind of stuff. And it's, like, also, like, yeah, women should be in the kitchen, too. Like, definitely. Bro, who says that? Who, who says that men shouldn't express emotion and cry all the time? Uh, I, I mean, a lot of people. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people should, a lot of people say that. Masculine good man to a bad man. There's no such thing as too much masculinity if it's genuinely masculine. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. It's absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you had, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. Those were masculine where did, men. Where did you get your views <laughs> about this from? Just what I grew up with. It's the family I grew up around. And your the, father, and, your mother? Yeah, both? And, and the world I lived in. And I think a lot of the things I'm saying now about <laughs> masculinity and how people should act in the world how the world should function were considered completely normal and accepted by everybody only 20 years ago. I think the world's just lost. No, no, it, it's like there's an element of truth to that. I remember like, uh, you know, with like my mom's whole situation, like they called the firefighters and like some bunch of dudes like six foot and over show up. They're all over 200 pounds. I'm like, you know what? Shit's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. They're going to take care of it. It's going to be okay. They had no problem. Like she was overweight. They got her out of there. There's no problem. So, yeah, there, there's truth to that, for sure. It's mine.
for me to stand up and say a man should protect a woman now gets to be called a misogynist and cancelled. If I said that 10 years ago, everyone would say, duh. And what's funny is, everyone who argues against me and says men shouldn't protect women, especially all the feminists, if they were with their boyfriend and a man broke into their house, guess who they'd expect to go downstairs? Who do you think? Think they go themselves? Are they <laughs> going to Afghanistan? No, we send men to do these things. So well, we, send women, we send women in the armed forces too. We, you have to generalize when you make points. There are many, many courageous exceptions, people. Exceptions, women exceptions women in the do armed not forces. disprove the rule. No, but there are, you've got to concede there are many courageous women serving in the armed forces. Absolutely and utterly, completely correct. But by and large, traditionally, soldiers are men. Exceptions do not disprove the rule. Well, it's not an exception. It's a fact that there are a lot of women mm -hmm. in the armed forces. Correct. But if you were to take the average soldier, they are ma a male. If you're allowed to say who's a male and who isn't nowadays, I'm assuming their gender, I apologize. If you were to take the average soldier, they're a male, which means that exceptions are the few. See, this is why people like Andrew Tate are popular is because like everybody knows most soldiers are men. Everybody knows this. It's just common sense, like, duh. And so to the extent that somebody gets pushback on saying something that is just a known fact, that everybody just acknowledges this, but somehow we're supposed to pretend like it doesn't exist, that's why he's popular, is because he says what's fucking obvious female soldiers, which because there's a lower percent of them, a lower probability, exceptions do not disprove the rules. Men do the fighting. What right now in Ukraine, men cannot leave. Women are allowed to leave because men have to fight in the front line and women are allowed to go to Dubai. That is how it is. What do you say to young men who come to you for advice? You feel lost. You don't really know where they fit into society. I say that life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Dame Shiller. I think that's generally true. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I will also say that I always, every day, thank God I was born a man. I would not want to be a girl. Like, I, I think that girls get fucked over in a lot of ways, and uh, it sucks in our society. Absolutely. Uh, I feel very lucky I'm a guy. Hancock says we've become too over-emotional as a society, crying too much about mm -hmm. everything. Well, she got a point? She's completely right. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence, you get rapists. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not going to hurt people. He's going to sit and think about his actions very carefully, and he's going to be a good man who protects for, and provides for his family. You find a uh, there's a lot to uh, there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, like I, I I don't really know. I mean, what it's like school shooters are because men are able to be emotional. I don't know about that, man. I feel like a lot of the people that are school shooters, like people, nobody really thought they would be a school shooter. I think they usually suppress that a lot. He said over emotional. Yeah, I mean. I don't know how I feel about that. I have to think about that one. A man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're going to find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc. and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. Absolutely not wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inversed on its head. Completely not wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there, you cry your eyes out or blame other people. Oh. This is what my dad taught me all the time, right? And, and like, I think that it's, but it, it's not like a, it's not like a 100%, 0% thing. I think that it's okay to have like feelings and to, you know, feel a certain way. But at the end of the day, you're going to feel the way you feel. And then you got to deal with reality after that. 
tough being a out. woman too in modern society. It's certainly tough being a woman, but I'm not a woman, so why would I speak on issues I do not understand? I'm a man. You can feel an empathy for women. I feel empathy, certainly, but I do not understand their issues. See, a lot I... of men come up to me and they admire you. I've got to say, a lot of women I've spoken to don't admire. They think you represent misogyny. They think when they hear you not commit to saying the Taliban shouldn't be banning women from university education, well, why can't he just say that's wrong? Well, I don't know why he can't say that's wrong either. I think that's a good point. Like, it, it's like, why are you, like, wh why, why do you talk around the issue? How is it so hard to just say, like, yeah, obviously it's bad to do that? Like, that's very fair. Firstly, that's not my experience. I experienced the absolute and utter opposite of that. Secondly, it's because it's a moral point I'm making. My moral point is I speak on things I understand. I speak on experiences I've had. Would you believe on, in equality? I speak, yes. I speak on, uh, sure. I speak on subjects I know intimately. I do not feel qualified. I'm a realist, and I do not feel qualified to sit and discuss the gender laws in Afghanistan. I have not been to Afghanistan. I have not researched the subject thoroughly. I'm not going to sit here and say how the Taliban should be running their country. It's nothing to do with me. I find it quite flattering, Piers, that although... I think that it's fair to say that not letting women go... Like, I, I agree with him in a general sense. And this is what I've said many times myself, right? The reason why I don't talk about, like, other countries' politics is because I respect that country to you know, do what they want to do. I don't, I don't own that country that I don't control them. It's their right. I don't speak their language. I don't live where they live. I'm not in their culture. I have no idea, but I do think that it's fair to say like, you know, shit like slavery, like not letting women, uh, you know, go to school. Like this is obviously a bad idea. Like this, this sucks. Like you don't, you don't have to, like, you don't need a degree in, in like the studies of that country to know that's bad. You know, I understand I'm monumentally influential, the most Google man on earth, etc. I find it very flattering that you think I have some kind of control over the domestic policy of Afghanistan. But I assure you, I don't. I don't. No, no, so I'm, not, nothing I'm, to do I'm not asking you to have a view on having uh, influence over domestic policy. I'm sure the Taliban couldn't give us stuff what either of us say about it. Um, it's just curious to me that it's an easy win for you to make women think you're not anti them to say that when they're not given equality i don't think it's really that easy of a win to be fair like i would say it if i was him but like if he says it he they're not gonna be like oh well now we know you're the good guy they're still not gonna like him as the women in afghanistan clearly are not because they're not allowed to go to university now as of today that is clearly unequal unfair we should all be able to agree that that is wrong well Certainly, as a realist. Even you, tough guy, I, I, Andrew. It's Tate. not tough guy. I am a professional. As a professional, I can state that, yes, it is not equal. Yes, it is not fair. That is obvious for anybody. I'm not saying those things are not true. What I'm saying is, it's nothing to do with me. Right, okay, but you made a concession That's you fair. think is wrong. It's wrong then. I said it's unequal and it's unfair. Yeah, so wrong. Well, perhaps. And, Force and, yourself, Andrew. No, perhaps it's wrong under certain moral guidelines, but under the moral guidelines which are currently in charge of the jurisdiction of Afghanistan. They don't believe it's wrong. It's nothing to do with me. It, the, bro, like, what are all these gymnastics? Something that's unfair? Like, what are we doing? Like, come on, just fucking say it. Like, why are we, why are we playing Ring Around the Rosie here? Like, this is so annoying. Well, then I, I'm not going to sit here and tell other countries how to run their laws. I'm going to live in societies which with right. laws I'll I respect. You, you know what? I'll take unfair and unequal. Sure. Because that's self-explanatory. We're going to have a game of chess in a minute okay. after the break because you are a very good chess player. I can hold my own in the chess board. Your father was a chess uh, international master, uh, in fact. And we're going to have a five-minute game of speed chess. Winner takes all, Mr. Tate. Welcome back to Pittsburgh on Central. Andrew Tate is still here. Andrew's father oh. was an American chess international master, and his son's pretty good at it too. Well, I can hold my own as my school chess champion. Uh, and with five minutes left on the program, we're going to have a game of speed chess. I'm going to be honest, I don't even know all the rules in chess. Winner takes all. All right, well, you're white. Off you go. That's racist. Off we go. Five minutes, go. That's racist, Piers. Cancel Piers Morgan. <laughs> okay. Are you good, Piers? Well, clearly, you're going to destroy me. Clearly, from this opening, better than you. Let's see, I guess. Aren't we? <laughs> uh, okay, let's be aggressive, shall we? All right, it's a five-minute game. Already fucked up. Yeah, bro, that was a bad play. Definitely, like, huge mistake. School chess champion, eh? Mm-hmm. Already talking shit. Certainly. Lennox Lewis was better than you when I played him. Was he? 
Well, he beat me 39 times out of 40. Check. Yeah, he is uh, pretty good at the game, I heard. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm going to laugh aggressive if Andrew loses. Today. Show you a bit of toxic chess masculinity. Well, the world's been pretty aggressive with me lately, Piers, so uh, I'm used to it. It's fine. Uh -huh. Okay. Oops. Apologize. Is he gonna why do you think the queen... 345. Why do you think the queen gets to jump across the board and the king doesn't? Because it's sexist. <laughs> the game of chess is sexist, but perhaps it reflects life, Piers. Perhaps. Haven't you ever thought? Oh my God! Time. Oh. Stop stalling. I know what you're Fine, doing. I'll just take your queen. Oh God! I'll just take your queen. Damn it! I was trying to give you a little speech there. You didn't want to listen to it. No, I, I didn't. Oh you, no! You in Dubai, the girl just gets an Instagram invite, gets to jump right on board. She so gets listen. to run across the board and do whatever she wants. But the man has to get there a square at a time. The man had to buy that yacht. That's the difference between being a man and being a woman. That's why the queen gets you to know what? how she does. Oh, a my chivalrous fucking man just God. Let ladies go first. Life oh, wow. And chess That's reflect. why I let you go first. Life and chess reflect, Piers. Mm -hmm. I've made a catastrophic error, but Jesus. I'm bouncing back. Let's see. I always accidentally take someone's chick. Three minutes. I don't even <laughs> mean to. It's just like, oops. <laughs> oh, my God. You need right. to stop knocking my pieces over like some. Doug. Yeah, exactly. He's not getting in my head. They're talking to me saying you're getting in my head. I think Pierce is losing. Um, I mean, I think. How do you think chess reflects life? He lost more I pieces. I think that it's all about strategy. Correct. That if you're good at chess, you can be good at pretty much anything uh -oh. because it's about. He's down ahead. bad, is he? It's about planning. I mean, the queen's like the best character, practice. right? And you know what else is beautiful about chess? Mm -hmm. If you lose. Somewhere you made a mistake. There is no luck. Absolutely right. And chess, even if it's the smallest mistake, somewhere it was your fault. It teaches absolute self-accountability, which yep. is something that we need a lot more of in the world today. That is true. And that's why chess is so important. Oh, you my, my knight, God. You don't want it? Why no, do you want my knight? Because uh, I'm playing a long game. Oh, okay. I thought you'd want it. I'm going to leave it there in case you take it anyway. Okay. I'm going to go. Because I know what you want me to do. I'm not going to do it. Actually, I will do it now. Okay. <laughs> uh. Check. 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 How long? <laughs> I need to buy some time here. I need to buy some time. Uh, this is really playing well on radio, by the way. <laughs> Damn it! Okay. Uh, uh oh. I'm screwed. I'm screwed. How Don't much, say that. How Pierce. long have I got? One you minute twelve. Believe in yourself. Oh, I never ever give up. Believe in yourself. Pierce. I do believe in myself. Thank you. <laughs> Self belief is important. I do believe in myself, but this has not gone well. You're quite good at chess. I'll give you that. Yeah. Well, in the chessboard of life, I've done pretty good. Jesus Christ. I've done okay. Uh huh. I mean, the question is, is it, can you beat me in time? You've only got 50 seconds. Check. I That's mean, interesting. Yeah. it's pretty much over, right? Let's we'll see. Uh, it, it seems mate like this peers. was... Yeah, you can have that. doesn't matter. It's mate and two. Check. Mate. Good game. Ah! Good game, sir. Well played. Thank you. 25 seconds away from safety. Okay, well, Andrew Tate, I'll oh, give you something. There it is. Uh, you're good at chess. Thank you. You're fucked. You have to be. You just beat me. <laughs> I know you're a national, internationally renowned What has player. chess taught you about life, quickly? I can teach you a lot of things. Like I said about the queen being able to run around the board, the king having to move a square at a time, <laughs> about the fact you need to think ahead, absolutely everything is your fault. But there is a saying, which is actually one of my favorite sayings in the world. It said, a well-played a well -played game of chess is a sign of a gentleman, but an expertly game... Expertly played game of chess is the sign of a wasted life, and it's kind of sad. It was I, sad play, I played Dennis Lewis in, on Celebrity Apprentice 39 times out of 40 in America years ago, and he, he beat me 39 times out of 40 of me. Uh, and I was amazed. He was taught by his mum. But he was all about the, the way he fought, the way he boxed, yeah. was all down. What he's saying is that spending all your life being good at chess doesn't matter. Nobody cares.
it's okay to be good at the game, but to spend your whole life around it is like, that's kind of, uh, kind of a waste of time. That's what he's saying. I'm not saying it's true or not. I'm just saying that's what he's saying. The way he played chess. Yeah, chess. It was all about looking ahead, getting ahead of your opponent, planning, planning punches, you know, all that kind of thing. Chess absolutely reflects life. And even I say this now in my business meetings with my team. A lot of the problem in the world today, especially with teams and businesses, etc., everyone wants to be the king. But if you want to have a team, if you want to have a side that wins, if you want to win a game of chess, everybody has to know their role and do their role effectively. There can be a king and a rook and a pawn and a bishop and a knight, and everyone does everything correctly. And when That's that happens, true. you have a very formidable board and you're hard to beat. And uh, chess reflects life absolutely. It's, a good it's something point. I do every single day. What kind of man was your father? He was the greatest man on the face of the planet. But uh, luckily he had me. And now in the natural order of the universe, he is gone and I am here and I carry his name. And it is my duty to bring <laughs> honor to him. And this is one of the greatest things about achievement because achievement honors your ancestors. People talk about my father because of how successful I am. And people will talk about me into eternity even after my death because of how successful uh, my son will be. This is the great thing about achievement. It's an honor to your ancestors. What would he have made of your success? Oh, my your God. He would be extremely oh my underwhelmed fucking by God. it because he always expected it of me. I am Emory Andrew Tate III. I can do whatever I put my mind to. And he would be like, well, of course. You decided you wanted to become the most famous man on the planet. It took you a few months, of course. Does your, does your mother ever do what my mother does and occasionally go, I think you went too far there? My mother has absolute trust in my abilities and capabilities. She says, be careful, do your best, but... You are the most capable and competent man on the planet. And that I wasn't the question. That, that's what she said. She <laughs> says, be careful. Does she ever say you shouldn't have said that? Nah. She knows better than that. Really? No, no never. She says, you're, just be careful. You know what you're doing. It's kind of hard to argue against me, and this is what my haters seem to struggle with. It's hard to argue against a person who is monumentally successful in every single human metric that can possibly be measured. This is why young men respect me so much. They but want you ever to tell be, your mother what's No, that's, he's, he's right about that. That's why guys like him. The reason why guys like Andrew Tate is he's got a lot of money. He's tall. He's athletic. He is uh, combat ready. And he has a lot of girlfriends. If you are 17 years old, this guy is batting five for five. Like, yeah, this is, this is exactly where you want to be. Be my life. You ever tell her what to do? I don't need to. She's a full-grown woman. Would you ever tell her what to do? I would give her my advice if she asked for it. You say you can't leave the home, you can't drive, all those things you joke about. Or? I would give her my. I'd give her my opinion. I would say perhaps you should move house now, or perhaps that's not safe. Or yeah, I would absolutely because I'm responsible for her safety. And when you're responsible for somebody's safety, you have an opinion, and you need to have a firm opinion on that subject. Yeah, so of course. completely. For any woman I am responsible for, for any woman I am responsible for her safety, I will sit and say that's an unsafe thing to do. How much are you worth? I'm a billionaire by now. Dollars or pounds? About dollars. We're not in pounds yet, but All we'll right. get there. Soon. So what to do? Yeah, we have a, a little bit of work to do. But and finally, I know you don't know anything about football, Kerry even less, but greatest of all time, Ronaldo or Messi? They're both two very hardworking men, and I have absolute respect for anybody on earth who dedicates themselves to this. Andrew Tate, thank you very much indeed. That's okay. it for tonight. Keep it uncensored like it was tonight. I would say, like, uh, th this is a pretty good interview. I, I, I think so. I feel like the chess game at the end, it's, like, so unorthodox. Let me link you guys the video, okay? There you go. You can, uh, you can give it a like and, uh, and all that stuff yourselves. 35, 355 million net worth. I mean, like, who the fuck knows that? I mean, he says it's a billion. Somebody else says it's 300,000. Like, nobody's going to have any idea. I think this was a, uh, yeah, this was a pretty decent interview overall. I don't like how he just, like, it's like the mental gymnastics he does to not condemn, you know, like, fucking... Uh, making being gay illegal. Like, why Why can't you just go and say, yeah, this is bad? It doesn't seem like it's that hard to do. I don't know. He just doesn't want to lose. Yeah, I don't know. So he just want to admit some things are bad. Yeah, it, it, well, I mean, he admitted the ISIS thing was wrong. Like, pretty much full stop. He said, like, yeah, it was stupid. I shouldn't have said that. That's it. I don't believe that anymore. So, like, why not do it with the other thing, too? It'll alienate people who like him. I think that's the case, too, man is like the reason why he doesn't say that is that like he knows he has to play to his base and there are a lot of people out there that whenever they hear that women can't go to university they're like yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right you know and so that's that's why he probably doesn't do it mm.
Not just Muslim. No, it's not that, man. Like he said this shit before he went to Islam as well. Like it's nothing. It's got nothing to do with being a Muslim. Yeah, I, I mean, like it, it's like that. Being being religious is like a new thing for him. He caters to the women should be housewives crowd. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Like there's nothing wrong with a girl being a housewife. The only problem is whenever you say they have to be. Like. <laughs> I have, like, I am a traditional marriage enjoyer, as I've said. I would have no problem having a girlfriend or a wife that's a housewife. I think that's totally fucking fine. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, pretty much. She worked sometimes, but for the most part, she stayed home. And she did work, actually, but she worked from home. She was there. She took care of us. Me, Cody, Jeff, Cameron, Lowell, Toby, like, fucking AJ, uh, Sean, and Dylan, all of my friends, like, all had their lives affected and changed because of her. It didn't matter, like, what her career was. And that's a fact. Like, we, we gonna, we're never going to forget that shit. So, yeah, I mean, if I like to be able to give that to your kid and, and to, you know, the, the next generation, I think that's a good thing. What's wrong with that? Yeah, I, that's I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Your mom did something right raising you. Yeah, I mean, I, some people would disagree with that, but I'm, I'm all right. I guess you could say. Check Discord DMs. I don't want to look at that shit right now, man. I got a bunch of other shit to look at too. Is red religion doesn't allow uh, women another choice? Nah, bro. Like, why you why you keep saying that about how it's a religion thing, man? He just con, bro. He converted to Islam like six months ago. He's been saying this for years. Like, what about before then? Uh, 100 percent don't agree on men need to be men sometimes men can't be men in the traditional sense depression mental health etc stop men from being men depression isn't as simple as exercise out of it or stop feeling that way i agree that depression is not as simple as exercising out of it but can we also agree that a lot of people do not have like clinical chemical imbalance depression they're just unhappy with the current life situation and maybe exercising out of it might work but they'll never know because they'll never try it like, can we just acknowledge both of these things are true? Like, it, it, it's both of them. You're right, and I think that he's right to an extent. Like, I'm right. Like, that that's that's what it is. Like, there are a lot of people that are unhappy with their life because they don't even try to improve it. And all they do is complain about it. But how bad is stupid? Yeah, I think so, too. Um, leading a healthy lifestyle with some sort of fulfillment? Yeah. That's because they're pussies like me and Tate's right. No, the thing is, like, you're not a pussy or anything like that. The thing is, like, you don't, like, be, in my opinion, being a man is being able to be who you want to be. Because, like, it's true that, like, nobody's going to give a fuck about you. It's to unapologetically be yourself. And, like, that to me is what it means to truly exist. And, it, it, like, what a beautiful gift that is that you can live in a world that you can do whatever you want. You can go and be an athlete. You can be a musician. You can be an accountant. You can be a bum. You can be a crackhead. You can be a playboy. You can be uh, an investor. You can be a porn star. You can be whatever you want to be. And I think that anybody who's living a life that they're ashamed of is like living against the... What's the way to say this that makes sense? I don't even know how to fucking say this that makes sense. It's like if you live a life that you don't like or you're not happy about, it's like you might as well be dead. Like, that's the way I look at it. That's why I do what I want. It's because if I'm not doing what I want, being who I want to be, what's the point? What's the point of any of this? That's how I see it. Now, I'm not saying everybody should live like I do. But that's how I do it. 